The NHS under fire again, this time for saying that uh, the description of fat people shouldn't be fat people or large people. It should be people living with overweight to avoid insulting them. Experts claim that using first person language like this reduces discrimination, which comes after research stated that uh, calling someone large was also offensive. Uh, look, I, I don't know. I'm sure somebody might anecdotally tell me to the contrary, but I don't think many people go into a hospital where they're greeted either at the reception in A&E or by the nurse, the doctor or the porter or whoever. Nobody ever said to that patient, cool, you're a big one, aren't you? No one ever said that. I, I would imagine they're already mindful. So this is arguably the NHS trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist, which wouldn't surprise me. Let's speak to Christopher Snowden, Head of Lifestyle Economics at the IEA. Christopher, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Nice to have you with us. Um, I'll ask for your view, by the way, on, on the, the BBC and Nigel Farage moment in just a second. But, um, I mean, what is going on here at the NHS? What, what do you imagine might have happened for boffins, that word, over there at NHS HQ to say, rip up the rule book, we need to change how we speak? It's just terminology that you see knocking around in public health academia. Um, and on one level, it's just a sort of form of political correctness. So, for example, they don't like the word wheelchair user. It has to be person who uses a wheelchair and all this kind of thing. Generally, they try and get the word person or people in there to try and remind people that these people are people. Apparently, people in the NHS need reminding that human yeah. beings are people. And so it's, it's supposed to be more considerate and less dehumanising. But I really don't think many people do think it's dehumanising to say, you know, an obese person or an overweight person. It certainly trips off the tongue a lot better than saying a person with overweight, which sounds really weird and clumsy. So on one level, it's just unnecessary political correctness for you know, no real reason. But on another level, it, it portrays people who are overweight or obese, and they're two separate categories, by the way, um, it portrays them as being passive victims. You know, you're living with something, as if it's just something that's happened to you. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. So I think it's a little bit more insidious, actually, than some of these other terms that are used. I was surprised. I was waiting, and I did try to look. Um, maybe it's there, uh, Christopher, and, and I didn't spot it, but I wondered whether they were sort of offering up similar language um, to... to Placate the sensitivities of alcoholics, for example. You know, will it be people living with, uh, living with drink? Well, is is that the better way? Well, to they don't. They actually don't like the word alcoholic at all. Um, they would prefer something like dependent drinker. A better example, perhaps, is smokers. Um, you know, they are calling somebody a person who smokes, which would be absolutely equivalent to yeah. all these other kind of terms used. Would be, um, you know, would at least provide a level playing field. But they don't tend to do that. Maybe one day they will. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's all this kind of stuff. They're like a lot of you know, tinkering with the language. It's just there to kind of obscure facts and, and, and make things less plain than they really are. And the vast majority of the time, I'm quite sure that whoever these people are, whether it's an alcoholic or an obese person or a wheelchair user, they couldn't care less yeah. about this. They know that they're in a wheelchair or they're alcoholic or they're overweight. Uh, they would, in, the, in this instance, they would probably used to use the word fat. And, and I can't imagine that anyone in any of those groups ever walked into a hospital. And again, what I said at the beginning, there might be an anecdotal example of somebody who was unkind. But broadly speaking, no doctor ever shouted out, all right, fatty, when an obese person came into the surgery. That never happened. No. And, you know, the reason we started using the word obese in the first place is, apart from yes. it sounds more of a clinical term, you're not calling people fat which could be considered to be a little bit flippant and, and, and rude. Um, but, yeah, I do think, as I said before, you know, the thing about this living with overweight, living with obesity, apart from being really clunky, um, it does tap into something in the public health lobby at the moment, which is let's not in any way betray uh, people who are victims of sort of kind of self-inflicted lifestyle choices to be in any way responsible or even able to change yes. what, you know, what, what they are. Yeah, they yeah. want to blame it on society. They want to blame it on the food industry and the government and you know, everybody but the person themselves. Like, and like, it's somebody, also, like it's something you caught rather than uh, anything else. Exactly. Yeah, a disease that there's nothing you can do about. Uh, all we can do is get yeah. government to, to change policy on, on food and so on. I mean, if you wanted to be a purist about the English language, living with weight would be better. Living with overweight just doesn't, you know, as you say, it's clunky. It's, it's not a, you know, a professor of English would mark you right down for that phrase. Yeah, I mean, overweight really is an, an adjective rather than 
And yes, now, I think, most it, people I, I think that say. I think that's true. While you're with us, Christopher, uh, a Nigel Farage moment. A, a day wouldn't pass if there wasn't one. This was an absolute peach. It was a beauty in terms of uh, curious moments over there at the BBC when they called him out in their kind of thinking uh, for using uh, inflammatory language. Yeah, I saw the clip. Um, I think your call was right, actually, that this just it tripped off the tongue without any thought. I, yeah. I think, actually, probably what she was thinking was significantly more robust than what she said. I think she probably, as she said it, thought that that's a perfectly neutral way of putting this um, because everybody around her thinks you know, roughly the same. And that's the trouble with the BBC, that the, the bias is not deliberate. I think, actually, a lot of people with BBC try very hard not to be biased, yeah. but sometimes it just slips out.